A fast moving object the size of Manhattan is hurtling towards our solar system and it will make its closest pass to Earth on December 17th. Imagine waking up, grabbing your morning coffee and checking the headlines only to see physicist Michio Kaku on every major network, his face etched with a concern you've never seen before, repeating one single chilling word, terrifying. This isn't a trailer for a summer blockbuster or a sci-fi reboot. This is the reality of 2025. And that headline is tethered to a fresh, world-shaking data dump on the third interstellar object humanity has ever detected. 3i slash Atlas. In the past weeks, a silent coordinated panic has rippled through the global scientific community. Telescopes on five continents, the unparalleled eye of the James Webb Space Telescope, and every spare radio dish have abandoned their scheduled tasks, swinging in unison toward a single, faint streak of light. What could cause such a unified, urgent response? The panic isn't just because Atlas is moving at an incredible speed, it's because its very chemistry seems to violate the fundamental rulebook of astrophysics, the one we've been confidently writing since the 1950s. Dr. Kaku, a voice usually synonymous with calm, futuristic optimism, delivered a summary stripped of all its usual comfort. He stated, If these numbers hold, we're looking at something that did not form in any environment we currently recognize as possible. The implications are staggering. So, let's break down exactly what has changed overnight, why veteran researchers are suddenly losing sleep, and what this object's existence could mean for all of us. First, let's set the scene of the discovery itself. It happened on July 1st, 2025, at precisely 2.14 Coordinated Universal Time. The Atlas Telescope in Chile, a key part of the Asteroid Terrestrial Impact Last Alert System, flagged an anomaly. Normally, this system is our planetary watchdog, scanning the skies for asteroids that might pose a threat to Earth. But this was no ordinary near-Earth object. It was a blip, a faint point of light no brighter than a 19th magnitude star. To put that into perspective, the magnitude scale in astronomy is counterintuitive. The lower the number, the brighter the object. The brightest stars in our night sky are magnitude 1, or even negative numbers. A 19th magnitude object is incredibly dim, thousands of times fainter than what the naked eye can see a ghost on the cosmic background. Within 24 hours, the Minor Planet Center, the official body for these announcements, issued a circular that sent shockwaves through observatories worldwide. The object's trajectory was unbound to the sun. Its inbound velocity was a staggering 58 kilometers per second, and its nominal closest approach would be inside the orbit of Venus. Let's unpack that. Unbound to the sun, means this object isn't part of our solar system's family. It's not in a gentle, elliptical orbit like a planet or an asteroid. It's on a one-way trip, a cosmic tourist passing through, and its trajectory confirms it will never, ever come back. The velocity, 58 kilometers per second, is simply breathtaking. For comparison, our fastest departing spacecraft, Voyager 1, is traveling at about 17 kilometers per second relative to the sun. This object arrived moving more than three times faster. The name says it all, 3i slash Atlas. The 3i prefix officially designates it as the third interstellar object ever confirmed. The first, the enigmatic Oumuamua, was a bizarre, cigar-shaped enigma that slipped past us so quickly we barely got a good look. The second, 2i slash Borisov, was more familiar, behaving much like a comet from our own Oort cloud though it carried some alien chemical signatures. Atlas, however, arrived bigger, brighter, and as the data began to pour in, crucially far, far stranger than its predecessors. The first anomaly, the one that made every astronomer double-check their calculations, is its sheer speed. 137,000 miles per hour. That's over 58 kilometers every single second. Let's try to frame that. It's 55 times the muzzle velocity of a standard M4 carbine rifle. If you fired a bullet from New York City, you could start a stopwatch. If Atlas started its journey at the same time, it would cross Los Angeles in the time it takes you to count to 90. The kinetic energy implied by that velocity is almost incomprehensible. It's a sobering thought that if this object were on an impact course, 
it would carry enough energy to obliterate a continent. Thankfully, every calculation confirms it is not going to hit us, a fact that provides immense relief, but does little to lessen the scientific shock. The speed is a clue to the raw power of the forces at play in the wider galaxy. So, where did this speed come from? In our universe, the primary way for an object to get this fast is through a gravitational slingshot. By swinging close to a massive object like Jupiter or even a star, a smaller body can steal some of its orbital energy and get flung out at high velocity. But there's a limit. Even the most perfect, idealized slingshot from a star requires a specific set of circumstances. A very massive star, often in a close binary pair, to provide the necessary kick. And when astronomers traced Atlas's path backward into the deep dark of interstellar space, they found nothing. No massive star, no binary system, no stellar nursery that could account for this incredible ejection velocity. It's as if the object was fired from a cannon that simply isn't there. The second anomaly is where things move from baffling to deeply unsettling. Early spectra from the James Webb Space Telescope delivered a chemical portrait that was utterly alien. The data revealed a sharp dominant spike of carbon dioxide, or CO2, and almost no discernible water ice. In our solar system and in every model we've built of others, comets are dirty snowballs. They are composed of roughly half water ice by mass. But Atlas is a different beast entirely. It's running at less than 5% H2O, with its coma, the fuzzy atmosphere around it, being overwhelmingly dominated by carbon dioxide. This alone would be enough to rewrite textbooks. But it gets stranger. The carbon isotope ratio, a deep level fingerprint of where an object formed, was completely off the charts. The ratio of heavier carbon-13 to the more common carbon-12 came in at 0.021. For context, the baseline ratio for our solar system is about 1 to 89, or 0.011. Atlas's ratio is nearly double that, a result so far from our solar baseline it's described as a three-sigma deviation, a statistical term meaning it's highly unlikely to be a random fluke. This chemical signature acts like a cosmic birth certificate, telling us about the star and the protoplanetary disk where the object was born. A different ratio means a different origin. Dr. Kaku, in his blunt assessment, laid out the two most likely and equally revolutionary possibilities. Either, he explained, it condensed in a carbon-rich protoplanetary disk around a much hotter star, an environment we've only theorized about, or something dramatically reprocessed its chemical makeup after it formed. He paused before adding, both options rewrite what we thought we understood about the timescales of planetary formation. The third anomaly pushes this event to the very edge of our understanding. Officially, the object's orbit is hyperbolic, the mathematical term for a path that is not bound by our sun's gravity. But there's a problem. There's a tiny persistent nudge in its movement, an impulse that doesn't fit any known gravitational model. After accounting for the pull of the sun, Jupiter, and every other body in our solar system, Atlas is still accelerating, ever so slightly, as if something is gently pushing it. The Jet Propulsion Laboratory's small body database, the gold standard for orbital mechanics, flags this anomalous acceleration as a 4.3 sigma outlier. In statistical terms, that means there is an infinitesimal chance it's a measurement error. Something real is happening. Of course, comets can exhibit non-gravitational acceleration. As they warm up near the sun, ice turns to gas and shoots out in jets, pushing the comet like a tiny, unpredictable rocket. But Atlas's chemistry shows almost no water ice, the primary fuel for cometary jets. The CO2 could sublimate, but the observed outgassing doesn't seem powerful enough to account for the measured thrust. This is where the conversation turns speculative, and frankly, a little frightening. Avi Loeb, the Harvard astronomer famous for his provocative theories about Oumuamua, immediately published a back-of-the-envelope calculation. He noted that if Atlas were an incredibly thin, lightweight object, a light sail, this is exactly the kind of excess acceleration you would expect to see from the pressure of our sun's photons pushing against it. Light sails are a known propulsion concept. They work by using the momentum from sunlight itself, like a sailboat using the wind. 
Dr. Kaku, ever the cautious scientist, stopped short of endorsing this view but refused to dismiss it. On the slide deck he shared with the press, he included a final, chilling possibility. We cannot rule out a Type 4 probe scenario until we rule out every natural one, and right now, we can't do that. For those unfamiliar with the Kardashev scale, it classifies civilizations based on their energy consumption. A Type 1 civilization has mastered its planet. A Type 2, its star. A Type 3, its galaxy. A Type 4 civilization, a theoretical concept added to the scale, would be a civilization capable of harnessing the energy of the entire universe. They would be beings who could manipulate the very laws of physics, almost godlike in their capabilities. The idea that this object could be a probe from such a civilization is what makes this event truly terrifying. So what does terrifying actually mean in this context? It's crucial to understand it doesn't mean there's an immediate impact risk. Atlas will safely cross the orbit of Mars on July 12th, make its closest approach near Venus's orbit on the 28th, and then head back out into the interstellar dark, never to be seen again. The terror is not physical, it is existential. Suppose the speed and the carbon dioxide ratios hold true. In that case, we are confronted with the undeniable proof of a cosmic environment whose chemistry we do not understand and whose formation processes are alien to our own. It would mean the galaxy is far more diverse and strange than we ever imagined. But if the anomalous trajectory persists, if the light sail or probe hypothesis gains traction, the implications are exponentially greater. It would suggest we may be under observation by hardware created by builders who operate at energy scales we cannot yet comprehend. It would move us from being the sole, lonely intelligence we know of, to potentially being cosmic infants in a universe populated by beings of unimaginable power. Either possibility scales from rewrite the textbooks to question whether our entire understanding of physics is complete. As telescope time requests pile up and clog servers, the global scientific network is treating the arrival of 3 i atlas as a once-per-century event. The next window for high-resolution spectroscopy, our last best chance to solve this mystery, closes in just 72 hours. After that, the object will have receded, growing too dim for even our largest ground-based instruments to study in detail. We will be left with whatever data we can frantically collect right now. And we will be left with the profoundly uncomfortable realization that the universe might have just sent us a final exam, one we are nowhere near prepared to take. Stay curious, keep asking the hard questions, and if you have an instrument that can still see Atlas, point it to the sky. Now, history rarely offers us a second draft on moments like this.